Good Saturday morning, neighbors. Sitting on the porch, had my coffee. Had too much coffee. I truly debate on topics for daily videos. I used to do three videos a day. There's a thousand backlisted in my YouTube channels. And I'll stand by any of them for the most part. There's mistakes in there. There's misspeaks. That's how it goes. So, anyway, welcome. Welcome back. Recently, there's been more than a few articles about releases of KGB documents regarding the Chernobyl nuclear accident. Now, there's lots of conversations about what happened at Chernobyl, how it happened, the response to what happened, what is still happening at Chernobyl. Chernobyl is in another phase of disintegration. It needs its next infusion of tens of millions of dollars in order to stay safe. The studies you can find about the biology surrounding these sites and these facilities is informative. And when you piece them all together, you see that the potential for harm isn't Godzilla. I love those movies, but it isn't about Godzilla. It's about man's engineering the planet, using their resources from the planet itself to further our own interests, to stay alive, to heat your homes, to power your electronics to move us from 3G to 5G or whatever the next technology leap is. So those KGB document releases, they're important. They're very important from a historical standpoint. One of the things inside those documents, inside that huge reference library created from one of the worst nuclear disasters, commercial nuclear disasters on the planet, but you have to keep a back note in your mind. There is no separation of commercial nuclear and military use of nuclear devices. The sciences are interleaved, intertwined. The fuel is one for the other. The trade-offs, the Faustian bargains are immense and huge. So one of the lessons out of Chernobyl is how much was kept from the public regarding the extent of the accident and the response. But an underlying challenge is informing the public of a disaster of this type and having some type of orderly evacuation. Orderly evacuation. How would you plan and be able to respond to an orderly evacuation to a nuclear event? Are your local firefighters actually trained in this? Or are they members of what's called a sacrifice zone? A place in space and time with higher risks than other places. That requires an additional education level for the people around to understand when the siren goes off, why you respond to it. Why do you respond to a disaster? I refer back to these things called protective action guidelines, which are part of federal documents, but there's many other names or acronyms for these types of documents that guide responses to massive events affecting hundreds, thousands, or millions of people. These are buried in nuclear response requirements for nuclear disasters. Whole states have to be ready for this, not only to evacuate an area, but to receive those evacuees. Neighboring states, we learn about evacuations from things like fires, chemical plant explosions, chemical plant releases that have one mile, two mile, five mile evacuation zones. How do you prepare for that? How do you keep enough buses handy Who's supposed to buy the suitcases to be ready to evacuate? In your disposable income? Remembering the average American income is not over 
60,000, the average for all of America. Throw out those goddamn billionaires and the bullshit media about them. Oh well. So the lessons from Chernobyl, the lessons from Fukushima will come out decades from now. They'll be forgotten in time, and the reasons to read them will be forgotten, like the book Silent Spring. Why would you read that book? It's just an old book on the shelf. Probably should be burned, according to some people, for the heresy in that book about man's pollution, man's avarice. Corporations, and they're hiding in the uh, world among us. Oh, well, hey, peace is out. Take care. One bite at a time.